begin with Eric Bailey of the Tulsa World and then go to Kayla McCory. Eric? Carlston, we just got done talking to Creed and we asked him about opting out and he said he had no, he wasn't going to op opt out. When you lose a playmaker like Kennedy Brooks, who did choose to opt out, how does the offense get started again? And just your thoughts on, on Kennedy opting out this season. I mean, you know, he has his reasons, but we just got to go with the flow, go with what we have, you know. we It's, it's just, it's between him and God. So, he that's his decision. You know, we, we with him on everything. He's no different than what he was. If he played with us, Opting out, that's not making him no difference from what he what he been doing. So that's still our brother, regardless. Okay, Caleb McCory with OU Daily, and then Ryan Aber. Hey, Charleston, uh, going into your fourth year at OU, uh, have you embraced being a leader not just on the receiving core, but uh, as the as the team as a whole as well? Yes, sir. You know, it just comes with being the older guy. You know, people still. Okay, he's been here longer, so he needs to step up, be a leader, you know, lead the young guys. So that's what we've been doing. You know, we ha we haven't had much time together, but because it's coronavirus. But I mean, the time we do have, we we initiating that, you know, leading the young guys. So yeah, we I'm embracing that. Thanks. Hey, Ryan Aver of the Oklahoman, and then Jason Kersey. Yeah, Charleston, what's your feelings about uh, at least going into the season as the, the number one receiving option? How much different does that feel from uh, the last couple of years where you've had you know guys like CD ahead of you? And what are some of the, the th steps that you've made in your game that makes you feel like you're ready for this? Just my, my blocking, you know, I'm being more physical blocking. Um, showing my presence there, crack blocking, um, you know, making big plays, leading the younger guys, seeing the younger guys make plays. You know, we just coming in as a whole. We looking more fuller as the as fall camp goes. Okay, let's go to Jason Kersey of the Athletic, and then James Hale. Yeah. Charleston, I'm just wondering your your um, thoughts on uh, Theo Howard and Ob, a couple of transfer guys who have come in. What what do you see from those guys uh, so far, and how how much do you think they can help? Um, you know the pieces they we brought in Theo, Ob, those guys those guys are some they, they're some playmakers. You know one on one period they're making plays, and we need to transfer over team period, but the the plays they do make I can see in the game like okay yeah. We can use those guys. James Hale with KREF and then John Hoover. Hey, Charleston, thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. I can tell by looking at you, Charleston, that you're <laughs> thicker, you, you know, you're bigger than you were. Um, you know, you came in, you were a speed guy and you're still a speed guy, I know. Uh, this year, you know, talk about what development you hope to bring to the field this year and how much better of a receiver you think and, and in what areas do you think you're going to be better at? Um, areas I think I feel better at is my yak, you know, getting the ball, getting upfield. I feel more confident getting the ball, tucking, getting upfield, seeing the awareness, you know. Now I can see the defense, you know, right. things just coming all together. It's just like, okay, yeah, now it's time to get right. But – like I said before, we all come together. We looking fuller as the fall camp ends and going into school. But yeah, it's there. Thanks. Hey, John Hoover with SI Sooners and then Kerry Murdoch. Hey, Charleston, uh, appreciate your time. So we talked to Dennis Simmons and he said that uh, we get this question every year new quarterback, whoever it is, new quarterback, how's it changed? And he said, from a receiver's perspective, it doesn't matter. We go out, we catch the balls. But I'm wondering if you can maybe help help us understand some of the, the differences, the idiosyncrasies that that you go from Kyler to Jalen to the guys this year. Maybe the cadence is a little different. Maybe the ball spins a little differently or arrives a little quicker. Just little, little things that you have to pick up on as a receiver. Um, you know, New quarterback is just 
this arm strength still there, accuracy still there. <laughs> I could just say different signal way, different way they call it signals. Uh, but other than that, Tanner Mordecai, Chandler, Spencer, they're all they're all guys that can throw the ball. So we receivers, so we 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 catching any ball, uncatchable ball behind us, above us, below us. We just there to catch the ball. So regardless who's throwing the ball, we're going to go get it. Can you elaborate on the, what you're talking about with the signals, how that changes? Um, you know, it's just different ways. Uh, Kyler might heal my signal this way. Um, I mean, it's just – it's in the it's in the room type, but just signal callers, that's it. Nothing different. I mean, he can – they all can throw the ball, so – other than that, we just focus on just getting the signal, translating that to the field, getting the play in. Gotcha. Thank you. Hey, Terry Murdoch with Super Scoop and Sports Animal, and then Bob Prisbillo. Hey, Charleston. Um, you know, this, you've seen the lineage here at wide receiver, DD, or start with Sterling Shepard, DD Westbrook, uh, Hollywood, uh, CD. How much of that is in your mind that you know you could be looked at like that if you you know how much was that through that through the offseason working hard motivation whatever for you that that you could reach that level you know people could look at you that way with a good season this year yeah I mean that's motivation you know CD that's my that was my roommate so just seeing him go through the process I mean it's just eye opening and uh, just knowing I can do that next. And like the whole off season, everything I did was gameplay. What I can do, it everything just translates to the field on the game game day. So I mean, just seeing them do it, go to their camp, talking on Facetime with them, or in our group chats, they giving their cues. You know, you know. So we just stay locked in. You know, keep keep my head up, keep my head on right, this and that, and. Um, they just always there. You know, I talked to Dee Dee before, but just knowing what they did and me being the next guy up, I just see that, okay, yeah, it's time. CD talks to you about that a lot? Yes, sir. Just like you next type, you know. Um, yeah, you know, that's my guy. Appreciate that, Charles. Okay, Bob Prisbillo with Sooner Scoop and then Myron Patton. Charleston, yeah, you came in high, uh, highly touted, right? And then you redshirted that first year. When you look at Jaden, Theo, Trajan, they didn't redshirt, but they didn't play as big a role perhaps last year as, as they would have thought. Did you have to say anything to them and kind of show them that you're an example that sometimes, you know, you just wait, you wait your time, the patience will pay off? Yeah, you know, those guys are not, they're not young no more, but they know what it is. They know it's time to get right. But um, we talk about that, just being ourselves, bringing energy to the group, uh, patting each other on the backs, you know, bringing each other up. Let us, let's, let's just make plays as a group. One make a play, the next one make a play. We just try to compete against each other. We've got Myron Patton with Fox 25, and then Brandon Drum. Myron? Charles, you talk about uh, being that guy. Is there a certain mental makeup you got to have to be that guy? Like when it's third and eight, and everybody in the state would think the ball's coming to you, or fourth down, and the big play is needed. Is there a certain mental state that you have to go to from being maybe the second guy on that totem pole to being the number one guy? Just knowing now that every ball or any ball can come to you, you know, so. Regardless, I'm running every route to get open, you know. So just having that mindset, oh, I'm going to kill this DB. He can't stop me. Just having that mindset, come out the ball. Even when I'm blocking, he's not getting the tackle on the running back. So just having that mindset, stepping forward. Okay, and Brandon Drum with Fox 25. Hey, Charleston. Appreciate you doing this. Um, you you came on, I guess, a, a little bit during 2018, then you had a couple of big plays during the Orange Bowl, kind of your coming out party. 
Uh, then you did the pro day where everybody kind of saw you running. Uh, the process for you following Hollywood, CD, and now it's your turn. Um, has it seemed like a long ride for you or has it gone by really fast? Uh, how has this process been for you? Um, um, it's been interesting, you know, different from other guys, you know, everybody got their different roles, but me sitting back when I red shirted, I learned a lot. I don't take that for granted. I learned a lot that year and just building up that next year behind Hollywood. And then the next year after that, me starting, you know, it's just all come together. So learn, just seeing those guys do their thing, I'm just implementing their, what they did in their games, implement, implementing that into my game, you know, all together as a whole. So, yeah. Okay, we'll go back to Myron Patton with Fox 25. Yeah, Charles, you've been here a while. Uh, have you given any thought that you guys play, you may not have a patch stadium, may not have, you may have 20%, 25%, whatever, may not have any fans or whatever. Have you given thought to that and what that might be like? What do you think that'd be like? I mean, I see in, in the NBA, their bubble, virtual fans, you know, football is kind of different. We have a lot more fans, but Regardless, no fans or with fans, teammates, we're gonna we're we're our biggest fans, you know. Sideline's gonna be hyped regardless. So if it's gonna be our sideline against their sideline, our sideline's gonna win, you know. But we're not too worried about the fans, but I mean the fans come in, that's gonna play a different role and that's gonna bring, I guess, <laughs> more interest to the game or bigger impact, I guess, but we're not too worried about the fans coming, but I mean, that's gonna be a plus if they can't come. Okay, we will go, we've got time for two more here. We'll go to um, Ryan Aver. Yeah, Charleston, uh, what's it like wearing a mask in practice and are there any challenges with that you foresee, whether it's in practices or games as far as like, communication, things like that? Yeah, I see um, our training staff different from other people's training staff. You know, other people, they're not wearing masks during helmets. But here we're wearing it for protection, you know, COVID reasons. But the only thing is, like, you know, when it get wet, you got to wring out the sweat, put it back on, you know. But we've been wearing it for so long, we, we kind of got used to it, you know. So it's just... You want to play ball, you know, just wear the mask, be safe, protect each other, and be there for each other. So we just wear that mask, and it's cool. Our okay, last question of the day will be from Lee Benson with KWTV. Hey, Charleston, I've been, I've been kind of asking all you guys this, the same question. Um, you know, knowing that a couple conferences are playing this fall, you're going to try to play in the spring, I know that, but knowing that you all are, are going to give it a go or try to give it a go in the ACC and the SEC. Uh, just for you, how, how important is football as a game? And, and not just like the sport, but things that come along with it. And then, you know, maybe for somebody like you, who you know, this season could potentially define or, or help you, uh, you know, get to the next level at, at a certain spot. So, I mean, how important is it for you to, to have the, you know, the game of football right now? You know, it's, it's very important, you know, but – a lot of guys just stay way out, you know. A lot of guys just stay away from other, other bad decision making. You know, this is just football is just a whole different life. You know, a lot of people don't see what football players go through to like put on to do this on the field. You know, we we sacrifice a lot. So just being able to play the game, I'm gonna continue to play. You know, that's why I'm not opting out or nothing. So, I mean, I love the game of football. It's just, it's always been there, you know, so why not keep going?